-hmm. Iowa has a long history of supporting education. And as you're doing work and talking about the Iowa core curriculum, today I'm going to talk a little bit about some history and focusing on the Iowa Standard School Movement. There was an article that Bill Sherman and Paul Theobald wrote uh, about the standard schools. And in it they said, for those who think of the current standard movement in Ameri American education as unprecedented, they would do well to revisit the standard school program of America's progressive era. So that's what I want to do today. Before the standard school movements, Iowa has been promoting education for a long time, even before we became a state. Uh, T.S. Parvin wrote for an early Annals of Iowa article about the first schools being possibly up in Dubuque with a man mining community, or maybe down in Burlington, Iowa, around the fort and uh, western settlers that were coming in. There were private schools that were established, and the early settlers, the European descendant settlers, would sign subscription lists and pay money for the school and for the teacher's salary. When Iowa became a territory, legislatively, education was on the, was on the horizon. Robert Lucas, the first territorial governor, thought education was so important in his first speech to the Territorial Assembly, he said, let me read and quote this, there is no subject which I wish to call to your attention more emphatically than the subject of establishing at the commencement of our political existence a well-planned system of common schools. Education in Iowa, public education in Iowa had begun. An office for the superintendent of public instruction was started. The Board of Education began a little bit later. There were a variety of different uh, superintendents. There were systems set up for townships, independent school districts, consolidated school districts. By the 1880s and the early part of the 20th century, Iowa had literally hundreds of schools dotting around the counties and our towns. Now today, what we would call the brain drain was happening in rural Iowa. Towns were getting larger and the President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt, amongst others, was concerned about this rural brain drain. There they talked about wanting to keep the standards up having standard people, not having them come to the cities and uh, um, change their way of life. So a, a country life movement was begun. And the standard school movement grew out of this. In 1909, Illinois was the first state that started having standard schools. This was a way to improve and con to improve rural schools. Iowa took a little longer to jump on the bandwagon. In 1919 is when we started the standard school movement. The superintendent of public instruction at that time was a gentleman named McClellan. He decided to get an assistant and set up May E. Francis as the person who would promote the standard schools and promote them she did. All around the state she went and talked with the county superintendents, with teachers, with townspeople about what the standard school could do for their community. Now, the standard school movement was important for a couple for first that happened legislatively. It was the first time in which the legislature had appropriated funds based upon student enrollment. It was also the first time that they established funding to go pay for teacher salaries or supplement teacher salaries. Standard schools became very popular. Um, schools had a variety of criteria in which they needed to be graded. A part of that, and let me look at the appendix here, there were six areas in which they uh, were graded. One was on the grounds and the outbuildings. One was on the schoolhouse itself, 
And there they would look at things like how clean, did it have a lock and key? Uh, were there windows um, with enough ventilation? Was it heated? Uh, were there, um, was it clean and tidy? And was there enough space? They also went in and the major part was uh, looking at teacher and school organization. Here the criteria also included management, well-kept records, uh, daily program posted and followed, and an area did they follow the state course of study and were the bulletins followed. Now as a librarian I also like that they were graded on was there a library and supplemental uh, readers available. And even then they knew that the school was an important part of the community so the standard school movement also graded on was the school and the teacher uh, involved in community and social activities. The standard school movement was an important step for Iowa education and it was in vogue from that 1919 time up to the 1940s. As you're continuing looking at the Iowa core curriculum you'll see as Bill Sherman and Paul Theopold said earlier, this is not unprecedented. There will be steps forward and back, but Iowa always moves forward with education. It's our history.